Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent. In my lab tour in video number 88, you saw that I have three different workspaces and five LED spotlights. In this video, I want to hack a Sonoff wireless switch, build a small wireless motion detector and combine them to a remote motion detection system. And everything for about $10. Let's start. Currently, I use two normal inline motion detectors attached to two groups of LEDs. One group contains three spotlights and are connected to the first detector, which in theory should see two of the three workspaces and keep the lights on if I work there. And the other motion detector is connected to the other two LEDs, which are a little remote and rarely used. There are three problems with this design. One, it is not easy to mount the inline sensor that it sees both workplaces. Two, the sensors are completely independent of each other. And three, one of the two died two weeks ago. This is why I want to replace them with two Sonoff switches and two ESP8266 modules with small passive infrared or PIR sensors. The Sonoffs are small boxes which include an ESP8266, a relay and a 3.3 volt power supply and can be connected directly to mains. Keep in mind, mains voltage is dangerous and you have to know what you do. The sensors and the Sonoffs are connected through Wi-Fi. This can be a one-to-one -one, but also a one-to-many connection which enables us to create more complex scenarios and is the solution for our issue number two. Because the sensors and the switches are in two boxes, the sensors can exactly be placed where needed. The spotlights should keep running for a certain time, let's say five minutes, after I left the particular place or the lab. And of course I want that I can change the parameters during operation from a smartphone or a browser. I use the small built-in push button to select the mode. Just a small information which can save you some time. If you want to change the Wi-Fi mode from AP to station mode or vice versa, you always have to reset the ESP and disconnect everything. You find the details in the sketch. If you try it differently, you end up with an undefined mode. Quite often it is in AP underscore STA mode, which can be a security issue. Maybe I will deal with this problem in a future focused video. I use the cheapest and simplest Sonoff switch, which costs around $5, excluding shipping and for the sensor, a Wemos mini board and one of these small SR505 PIR sensors. They run off 5 volt, but their output voltage is around 3.3 volt. So I connect them to the 5 volt rail of the Wemos and connect the output to the D5 pin of the ESP. The specifications say that they should reach 3 meters, but I do not think so. I have to further investigate into these sensors and also compare them with bigger ones. To power the sensors, I use a small 5 volt power supply. And of course, I mount them in a small 3D printed box. The PIR sensor and the DC jack are hot glued and the Wemos is mounted with a double-sided sticky band. But how can we program these devices? And how can we make sure that they can work with each other? Let's start with the Sonoff. To program it, at least the first time, we have to open it. Make sure that you do this before you connect it to mains. The PCB has three holes which can be used for programming because they expose ground, 3.3 volt, TX and RX. To make it simple, I soldered a female header on the board and made a specific programming cable which connects my FTDI adapter with the Sonoff. I included also a small switch to interrupt VCC for programming. Make sure that your FTDI adapter is switched to 3.3 volt. To set the ESP on the Sonoff in programming mode, you have to connect GPIO0 to ground while powering the board up. 
This can be done by a small push button which is already there. With our programming cable and the push button, we can start to program the device. In the IDE, we select a generic board with one megabyte and the minimum 64 spiffs. This allows quite big sketches and also over the air programming. Because later I want to close the Sonoff box and mount it somewhere hidden, I only want to do this programming with the cable once. Afterwards, I do not want to reopen this box again. This is a perfect scenario for the IoT App Store. So I only load the standard IoT App Store loader sketch on the board. After powering up, I can connect to it with my smartphone and also with a PC. I have to enter the credentials and the addresses of the IoT App Store server. This only has to be done once because the values are stored in the EEPROM of the device. The IoT App Store is presented in two of my past videos. It does not yet work with the version 2.3 of the ESP boards definition in the Arduino IDE, at least not without patching some files. It should be officially supported with the 2.4 release. But till then you can use the programming with a cable. No worries. And I'm working with a web developer on a user-friendly version of the IoT App Store, which should be available before Christmas. Then you just load once your loader sketch, define your new Sonoff board in the IoT App Store and define the sketch you want to download. The rest is done automatically. It then will download my file to your Sonoff. No installation of libraries, no programming, just fun. Let's now come back to the sketch. After checking for new updates, we have to start the Wi-Fi server, which understands just two simple commands and a status message for debugging. If it gets an HTTP request with the word on, then the relay is switched on. If it gets a request with off, then the relay is switched off. The off functionality is not used in today's scenario because we will switch the lamp automatically off if the time of the last on signal is more than five minutes ago. This is done with a simple counter, which increases every 100 milliseconds. If it receives the command status, it sends the number of seconds since the last on command. This functionality helped me to debug the sender. The server also sends a small feedback text. This is mainly used if you want to test it with a browser. If we start the device up, we see the IP address of the module. We have to make sure that this address always stays the same, otherwise we will not find it anymore in the vastness of the Internet. I included also the DNS service to avoid a fixed IP address, and this worked from a browser, but so far it did not work with another ESP. Maybe a viewer can help me out in this matter. A fixed IP address can be assigned in the DHCP server. This is usually your router. I showed the how-to in my video about the IoT App Store. If we now call this address with an on command, we see it in the serial monitor of the Sonoff. So this part is ready for deployment. Now we have to build the sensor. This is a little soldering work and 3D printing. After the assembly, we also start with loading the sketch and store the credentials and server names on the device. I usually print the MAC and the IP address on the box for future reference. Now we can start to write the sketch for the sensor. It monitors the PIR sensor and if it is on, it sends an on command to the Sonoff. If you define two different IP addresses, it sends the command to two Sonoffs if you want to switch more than one LED at the same time. As said before, we do not send an off signal in this scenario. The sketch is similar to the one before and also contains the feature to change the parameters remotely. I included also a small LED which shows the status of the PIR sensor. With its help, it is easier to position the sensor. Keep in mind 
that these small PIR sensors are switched on for about 8 seconds till they are switched off. So also this sketch is ready and we can close the device and mount it to a strategically good position. The test shows now that as soon as I enter my lab, the LED starts to shine, exactly as planned. So we have built a very flexible motion detector, which also works over a certain distance, as long as you have a Wi-Fi network available. So you could also imagine to use a watertight box for the sensor to mount it outdoors and keep the sun off somewhere inside your house where the conditions for electronics are better. Maybe you have other applications for this scenario, not using light, but heating, motors or other electrically driven stuff. Or you could replace the PIR sensor with any other sensor, like luminosity, temperature, humidity, vibration, sound, etc. You even could combine some internet services like time of sunrise or sunset, weather forecast, etc. to blend it with our own sensor data. Because the sensor box contains a beefy microprocessor, the limitation is only your imagination. If you keep both devices behind your firewall, the security issues should be manageable, if your Wi-Fi is properly secured. By the way, if you press the push button of the Sonoff, it creates its own VLAN and you can connect to it. I gave it the name Sonoff. In future videos, we will build on this knowledge and code for other Sonoff devices. Also devices with built-in sensors. These devices are particularly interesting because they include already a power supply and are, according IT, really CE compliant. With such a device, we can replace an ESP, a sensor and a power supply. Most of the Chinese standard 5V power supplies I use in my projects are anyway not CE compliant. So with these Sonoffs, I can sleep a little better. Let's now quickly calculate the material cost. The Sonoff, $6. The VMOS clone, $3. And the PIR sensor, $2. So we are close to the $10 if we use the cheapest prices available. With normal prices and including the material for the 3D box, we are probably closer to $15. Still okay for me. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.